It's Museum of Terror, and what if I told you that Stranger Things is more real than you know? Everybody knows about the gateway experience and remote viewing, but did you realize that the CIA has actually released thousands of documents, some of which have never been talked about and they're much more interesting? When the military and intelligence community started scientifically studying these phenomena, there were two areas of study, information processes and energetic processes. Information processes are receptive, like remote viewing, telepathy, and clairvoyance where you're receiving information. Meanwhile, energetic processes are active where you're trying to influence something outside of you, like psychokinesis. And I'm just going to lowball it for you. In Stranger Things, when Eleven is trying to kill something with her mind, that is exactly what they were going after with these programs. And you want to know something even more amazing? They were successful. Now, if you ask any of the old Stargate guys or military remote viewers, they're going to tell you that the Russians were decades ahead. They were trying to catch up because Cold War and Mom's Apple Pie and Yankees baseball and whatever delusional boomer bullshit justification they want to try to give you. The reality is that the CIA, at least, and the Pentagon had had an interest in this since the 1950s. This is a Studies in Intelligence CIA magazine from 1977 entitled Parapsychology and Intelligence by Dr. Kenneth Kress states that in 1952, Dr. Andrea Puharish gave a Pentagon conference on extrasensory perception, and that in 1961, the CIA set up a laboratory under Stephen Abrams at Oxford University in England under the auspices of Project Ultra. And the pisser is, they didn't release any of those documents, because of course they didn't. What they've made public is the remote viewing portion of it, the uh, incoming information, and not the psychokinesis where you can influence something at a distance, because that would be giving up control. It'd be pretty hard for Bill Gates to do his nonsense if people have that ability. So we don't have public documents from the CIA about that, but we have what they're saying about the Russians and their research. I have a 140-page book here from the Defense Intelligence Agency in 1980. It's entitled Paraphysics R&D of the Warsaw Pact. And what this book talks about is all of the research being done in the USSR where they took this information very seriously and it was accepted as scientific fact. Examples of the experimentation was transmitting mental orders to other people, transmitting images, transmitting numbers, transmitting messages to other people mentally that a Dr. Sergeyev was transmitting lights between people and picking it up on an EEG well before Dr. Persinger had done it in Canada. These experiments have been going on since the 1950s, and if you follow my psychic training device build videos or bought one of my mind-to-mind -mind devices, that technology is an outgrowth of this original research and is meant to allow you to do similar research and testing at home. Aside from simple mental manipulation or telepathy between two people, Energetic processes like psychokinesis, where somebody manipulates matter outside of themselves or manipulates somebody else's body, is very common in the Soviet research. And in fact, this whole page has been redacted. But if we go over here, we'll see that researchers were using psychics to stop frog hearts and eventually human hearts to induce heart attacks in people at a distance. Not only was this research replicated many times by many different researchers, it was published and spoken about publicly. Here we have a translation done by the military of the Interregional Scientific Conference Problems of the Biological Field by the Moscow City Directorate from 1991. This was a scientific conference being held for researchers in Russia. And here's an abstract. Remote human action on the state of electrical stability of the heart during experimental hypertrophy of the right ventricle. Conclusions were that the phenomenon of remote human influence on the state of electrical stability of the heart does occur. And in fact, this wasn't isolated research. In Russia, there was a whole program of intermingled universities and labs that were doing this research in conjunction with one another. In the document from the Defense Intelligence Agency to the House Committee on Appropriations, it's entitled USSR and Chinese Psychoenergetics Investigations, we see that in 1975, a high-level commission was officially established in the USSR to review psychoenergetics research. The commission was under the direction of the vice president of the USSR Academy of Sciences and included several institute directors and deputy directors and party officials. We see that psychoenergetics laboratories were established and that these laboratories served as screening functions for identifying people from the general population throughout the USSR who could perform well on psychoenergetic tasks. They had a method of recruiting 
or <laughs> kidnapping people into these programs. And we can see that other USSR research with may of both theoretical and applied implications examines possible large-scale psychokinetic influence on physical devices and on biological systems. These include interference with sensitive electronic devices, deformation of materials, influence of growth rates of plants, and influence of chemical reactions, and influence of psychological and physiological states of people. And that's why I wear my magnetic pulsar as a protective device, because this exists. It might sound far-fetched until you hear the stories of defectors, such as Dr. Larissa Vilenskaya, who is one of the head researchers in Moscow. And she claims that there were handheld devices that could allow people to perform mind over matter, psychotronic generators. Uh, they could get a group of people together and they could influence people from a distance that they could call up and kill somebody over the phone with suggestion and with the use of a machine. And that sounds very far-fetched until you see the list of questions that they were asking people when they defected from these programs, such as, what do you know about the use of parapsychological capabilities for controlling targeted people or making them ill? And also, there was a secret facility called N1 in Novosibirsk where they were doing this research. So, hey, there's your Russian version of the Hawkins lab. Now, as with most things in the intelligence community, you don't know what's information and disinformation. These were internal documents. I have faith that these are accurate as, you know, they were using them internally. But they have us talking about remote viewing and the gateway experience. They have us in this conversation here, but nobody's talking about the big dark area here of where's the psychokinesis research? Where's the research from the other labs besides Stanford Research Institute? So this was a rundown of what they were doing in the Soviet Union. In the next video, I'm going to go into some of the crazy anomalies I've run into about what they were doing domestically. But if you have any questions, ask in the comments, and I'll do a Q&A video. And if you want any of these documents, sign up for my mailing list, and I'll be putting them on the website.